y'all, and welcome back to an episode of the Paranormal Journals, only here on Black Mass and the Paranormal. What we are talking about today is my last theory on where these feral people have come from. Now, something happened about 10 years ago uh, that really kind of changes our understanding of human evolution in itself. A lot of people want to view the feral people of Appalachia in this light where they are these monsters living in the forest. Now this very well may be true, but I'm trying to stay open-minded in my research to try to establish a realistic perspective on what these people or things are. Now in 2013, a group of anthropologists made a discovery in a cave. They discovered the grave sites of a variant of the human species. This variant was known as Homo naledi. We do not have a really good understanding of exactly where we came from. Our species of human is highly intelligent, highly evolved, but we are different than the humans of the past. Humans like the Neanderthals were often uh, described as having these brute characteristics that allowed them to survive in severe climates with extreme colds and they were these overly aggressive kind of caveman species of human. The Neanderthals were thought to have been exterminated uh, approximately about 40,000 years ago. They don't know exactly what happened to the Neanderthals, but leading scientists believe that they had either um, basically wiped themselves out through a process of inbreeding, competitive replacement, or interbreeding, which is kind of the, the leading theory is that in a lot of Asian uh, ethnicities, they actually contain uh, about 2% of the Neanderthal DNA. So why is the discovery of Homo naledi important? Well, with Homo naledi, our understanding of the evolution of, of humans at, after uh, the Neanderthals is when we really kind of separated ourselves uh, from the rest of the pack kind of per se. This is when the establishment of like culture was thought to have happened um, with, pra with like religious practices and art and, and things like that. Now, the earliest known um, art depictions were found in a cave and they were said to have been done by a Neanderthal. Now, with Homo naledi, this kind of throws a wrench in this entire understanding of where we came from. Because with Homo naledi, they had this ritual practice in which they would carry what they believed to be their dead way down in this cave system. And I'm not talking about just like the mouth of a cave. And I'm not talking about... Uh, them taking the corpse of another Homo naledi and basically throwing them down the hole. They would strategically take this individual down into a cave system that was highly dangerous and, and extremely tight. Like, the in order to get down there, um, it, it was just a feat in itself. Not to mention carrying the corpse of another person but homo naledi did this and when they took these bodies down in this cave 
there is evidence of them actually digging a hole in order to bury them properly to show like a respect of a, a close family member or friend or whatever this person may have been to them in my opinion this same kind of thing could be happening in America. Now, our understanding of when Neanderthals came to America was that they arrived approximately 13,000 years ago by crossing the land bridge from Russia into New, uh, North America. So we have this group of people and it kind of is the same thing that was happening on the Eurasia side. So with the the modern idea is that, you know, Neanderthals through interbreeding basically just kind of wipe themselves out. So the question is that our understanding of how the Neanderthals went extinct in Eurasia could be a little bit different than what happened in North America. Now, if these Neanderthals were to come to North America and they were to continue to breed, they would be basically the dominant species of human, in my opinion, in North America. As opposed to Eurasia, where there were several different species that they were able to overpopulate. With these feral people, they are often described as having kind of a Neanderthal look to them. Their brows always is described as very kind of furrowed. Their jawline is, is very different than the human species that we typically see out in the woods. Now, there is a possibility that, that a subhuman species that is that we have not discovered yet could possibly still be living in these areas. Now with Homo naledi, we know that they used the cave systems not only as a, uh, as a burial place, but uh, these cave systems were viewed to them as a sacred area, I would assume, if they are burying their loved ones and their friends in these cave systems in which they would have to really really work to get down into now netflix also has recently uh published a very very interesting documentary on homo naledi it gives us a better understanding of kind of what they were doing it, it, it allows us to see the um, danger that they put themselves in in order to complete this ritual whether it would be um, a religious or cultural or whatever it may be to them with all of this being said with all of this being said the tales of people living in the Appalachian Mountains could very well be from a, another species of human that possibly we just haven't discovered yet. You know, doing this research, it requires me to have a very open mind. And I'm often criticized for trying to think outside of the box that these creatures, um, that these ghosts and these feral people um, exist. Now, our understanding of the universe is dramatically changing and it's changing very quickly. We recently had a government official testify and saying i felt like i was in a church there for a second testifying <laughs> testifying that uh they 
have not only these crafts, but non-human biologics. And the government has had this for years. So, is it possible that the government does know of another species of human that is basically living out in the wilderness? It's very... I, I, I think it's very well possible. You know, when the Dennis Martin case happened, uh, there was a, a lot of talk about these Green Berets that went out looking for him and encountered these feral people and that, you know, the, the, there was a lot of government involvement in this case. I think it's really important that we keep an open mind because we make new discoveries every single day. Our understanding of our purpose on this earth, in my opinion, we don't, we don't have a grasp of 1% of it. The other day, uh, I was in the lake and I was just kind of relaxing and I was looking up at the sky I had realized that while I was looking up at the sky, only about two minutes had passed. But it seemed like I had been staring at the sky for an eternity. And at that point, I realized that I basically don't even look up anymore. And I, I don't think that the majority of people don't spend more than 30 seconds looking at the sky a day. And even during that time, it's kind of in passing. You're, you're not looking at the sky. You're looking at what's in front of you. And if something just happens to cross your path, then at that point, yes, you see whatever that may have been. But you, you don't really look at what's in front of you. Now, the Appalachian mountain chain is such a massive area that even if you were to get on the Appalachian Trail and you would hike that entire trail, you would only be seeing such a small portion of the trail because you're going to be looking at what's directly in front of you. And I think that these encounters happen just as happenstance as somebody is traveling. It's just like a car going through an intersection. You know, when these encounters happen, it's such a small amount of time, it's such a small amount of time that we don't even recognize the world around us. In the Appalachian Mountains, there are tons of stories about people stepping off the side of the trail to use the bathroom and they get lost. That area is so vast and so dense that unless you were literally on top of one of these feral people, there's a good chance that you wouldn't even see them. Because if we look back to, you know, our past with the Neanderthals. The Neanderthals were thought to be these brute survivalists. You know, so if we go back and you look at the science going back three million years to where we started, who's to say that when humans began our more advanced brain systems, who's to say that it stopped right there with that group from these groups like the homo habilis homo erectus um is it possible that these groups didn't become extinct at all but because of their biological design were able to survive until this point and are still living in the forests today.
I wanted to go over all of my theories as far as where these feral people came from. Prior to um, the upcoming investigations and the upcoming videos that I am going to be releasing probably this fall. I wanted you all to have a good understanding of exactly what I'm talking about because I think it's important in understanding this research and in going out here and interacting uh, with people that have had these encounters with these feral people that you all have the knowledge of what I do. I'm not looking to... Uh, contain this in any way you know i i want as many people to be thinking outside of the box as possible um that way we can kind of move forward and we can kind of and and we can remove some of the stigmas that might uh come along with this type of research you know um and it goes along with Bigfoot, too, and the Dogman and aliens and all of this stuff. Everything is kind of starting to slowly leak out. Um, and if we're not careful, I, if we're not careful, in my opinion, our society is going to absolutely lose it because they are going to be confronted with the reality that these things are real and are actually out there and people are just going to lose their mind you know i was talking to my son about the different tribes um you know in like in the amazon even and how they interact with outsiders and they essentially don't but because they have lived in that area for so long, they have become absolute experts in survival. And who's to say that that isn't happening here? You know, if you ever drive through the mountains, the area is so big and so dense, it's something or somebody could survive out there for generations and be completely undetected it's all protected land so it's not like we can just we it's not like we're going out there and you know we're destroying a lot of it the only people that really go out there are the hikers but even when they go out and they are hiking um you know they're restricted to a small you know area of land now you've got your hunters that go out there and they get off of the trail but then you you got to look at the amount of people that are actually going out there and again you know going back to the intersection comment that i made earlier you know what are the chances of them interacting you know it's it, it very well could be a species of human that has avoided contact you know for hundreds of years and who's to say that they are not out there all right guys i'll shut up now so hope you all enjoyed this video i hope it kind of opens your mind i hope you uh, i hope it makes you think um if you're new to the channel please consider please consider hitting that subscribe button uh, if you have not seen my other videos on the origins of feral people, please go check them out. That way you have a better understanding of what I am doing. And that way you know I'm not just wandering around the woods aimlessly. And speaking of which, um, I want to say thank you all to the amazing support that you all showed with my new uh, idea of isolating research areas. Um, you know, it was kind of nerve wracking to be, you know, put myself out there and say, this is what I'm going to do. Um, because it, it's kind of weird, you know, the majority of paranormal research goes to, uh, people just often go to locations where, uh, there, uh, there's a haunting or where the Mothman was. People just go there, you know, that's it. And by 
doing this, I, I'm taking a huge area of land and I'm trying to isolate it the best I can and see what I can find. You know, there's no telling what's really out there. And I feel like if I'm able to do this on a bigger scale, then there we, we could possibly actually get some answers um, rather than just everything being so scattershot. So uh, please give this video a like. Definitely hit that subscribe button. Uh, share and tell your friends and family about it. Um, and until next time.